All right. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sustainable Jersey's 2021 Sustainability Summit presentation, Sustainable Jersey Tag Teams. I'm Samantha McGraw, Program Manager at Sustainable Jersey, and myself, along with my colleague, Heather McCall, Sustainable Jersey for Schools Director, are happy to welcome you here this evening. Just a few um, sort of administrative background details on uh, navigating Zoom. Um, so please use the chat feature if you would like to comment on any of the presentations tonight and share your thoughts with others. Um, if any of the presenters do ask any questions during their presentation, you can certainly raise your hand to respond to those questions. Um, and please do use the Q&A feature for questions for the presenters, which we will um, take at the end of the presentations. You can also like the questions um, to move them up in the list in terms of, um, you know, the priority of um, uh, how we will respond to those questions. Um, actually, Heather, would you, are you able to turn on the live transcripts? I realize I did not do that. Okay, great. So uh, momentarily, you should see that uh, the, there is a live transcript of today's presentation. Um, if you're not seeing it, uh, you will have to enable that option by clicking um, live transcript um, on the bottom of your Zoom screen and then enable transcript. Uh, you can also um, opt to turn those off as well. And finally, this event is being recorded and all of the presentations will be posted on our website by May 28th and uh, we will tell you where exactly specifically they will be posted at the end of um, the presentation. Just a few announcements. Um, the municipal certification deadline is June 6th. So uh, if you're preparing to submit, keep that in mind. We look forward to your applications. And the final certification deadline for the Sustainable Jersey for Schools program this year is on June 21st. So please, you know, if you have questions, reach out to us to help you through that submission. Um, additionally, thanks to the support of New Jersey American Water, we are offering free technical assistance for one community interested in developing a municipal water story, which is the foundational required action for the new uh, Water Gold Star. More information about this opportunity and if your municipality is eligible is on our grants page. And finally, Sustainable Jersey will be administering $75,000 of grants to fund municipal resiliency and environmental stewardship projects across the Atlantic City Electric Service ter Territory through ACES Sustainable Communities Grant Program. Again, more information about this is also on our grants page. And now I'd like to turn it over to Heather who will uh, cover some additional information and introduce our speakers. All right, thank you, Sam. Uh, so tonight we're gonna hear uh, from some folks who've been tag teaming, uh, which is uh, having successful collaborations and projects between the municipal uh, school and school green teams with Sustainable Jersey. Uh, so these are folks who have certified towns and certified schools in the Sustainable Jersey for Schools, uh, Sustainable Jersey program. So first we'll be hearing from Del Ran, um, Deborah Hammond, uh, the leader of the Del Ran Green Team, and Erica D. Michelle, the Sustainability Program Coordinator for the full K-12 through group in Del Ran uh, School District. And then we'll be hearing from Kristen Hall, a uh, parent and also chair of the Rumson Environmental Commission. And then finally, Krista Delaney, Egg Harbor School District uh, representative. So I wanna point out a couple of new things we have in the Sustainable Jersey program related to collaboration to help some of you along who may be thinking about doing this. There are some actions in the program that are in both the municipal program and the school program. So what that means is if you work on them together, you can both receive points in your certification application. So collaborating on a green fair, collaborating on community education and outreach, collaborating on a materials reuse event or collection or green challenges. So you're gonna hear a little bit about these types of activities from our presenters today. And to help you find them, we have some tools on our website. Um, on the Sustainable Jersey brochure, 
uh, for sustainable Jersey for schools, we have a new icon, a collaboration icon, so that you can look at our brochure and immediately see which actions are eligible in both programs. So you can team up with your uh, school or your town green team, in addition to our other categories for school-based actions and district-based actions. And then we also have a filtering um, uh, action, uh, filtering function in our action page for the Sustainable Jersey for Schools website. So you can uh, not only sort by mandatory, priority, district, and school actions, you can now sort by collaboration actions. So you can immediately click that, have that list, and maybe take that to your next meeting with your tag team. And then finally, we want to inspire some competitive uh, energy between everyone and let you know that we do have a Green Team Collaboration Award. And that is awarded at the Sustainable Jersey for Schools Award Ceremony every October. Past winners include the Del Rand team that you're hearing from tonight, as well as the Egg Harbor team. And you can see videos of their projects and more information on the Sustainable Jersey for Schools website, as well as our YouTube page. Great, thanks Heather. And also just wanted to let you know about a few resources that are available on our website um, as well to assist you. So both the municipal and the school uh, websites have a participants map um, where you can filter by certification status. Uh, you can filter by certified action and basically view the others around you that um, are also in the Sustainable Jersey program. So if you are a school looking to partner with your municipality, um, you can go to the municipal map um, on the municipal website and see who your contact is by clicking on uh, view profile in the little bubble that pops up for the specific town. And if you're a municipality that wants to work with your school, you can go to the school's website and do the same thing and view the profile to see who the contact is for your school. Additionally, you can also view the certification reports of municipalities and schools to see exactly what they did to earn approval for actions. Um, so that's a great, um, a great feature of the website to help further collaboration and also, you know, work towards your certification. And then finally, um, we do have uh, the Sustainable Jersey Regional Hubs Program. Um, there's 10 hubs around the state that essentially help green teams build capacity through training, best practices, resources, and networking. Um, as you can see here, there's a lot of great benefits. You know, there's a lot of wonderful networking opportunities and sharing of ideas. So if you're interested in getting involved in one of the regional hubs, you can learn more on um, each of the program websites. Um, and uh, we can also connect you to our regional hub coordinator, Lawrence Garonski. All right, so uh, with that, I will uh, transition this over to the Del Rand team. Let me just. So we're gonna introduce uh, Deborah and Erica. Again, they're past winners of the, the Green Team Collaboration Award, and their team has been especially great at doing projects with rain gardens, tree identification, um, pest control, things that really bring the students out into the community and um, foster true collaboration throughout the schools and the community. So uh, without further ado, our folks in Delran. All right, just give me a second. Thanks, Samantha. So thanks everybody, um, we're excited. Um, my name is Erica De Michelle, and I'm the K through 12 supervisor for science and a lot of other things in Delran, but sustainability is one of my hats. And uh, the reason we're excited today is because I'm blessed to work with someone like Deborah Hammond, who is the um, Delran Municipal Green Team, one of their leaders on that team. Um, we are going to uh, go to the next slide and just uh, have Deborah talk to you a little bit about like the history of Delran. Um, so both of our programs started pretty much around the same time. We both ended up getting certified in 2015. Well, one of our elementary schools got started in 2015. I guess we're all certified now. Um, 
And one of the first things that we kind of got involved with is Eric and I kind of hooked up and realized that there's a lot of synergy between the two programs and that we would really benefit by working together. Absolutely. Next. So in, in 2017, go to the next slide, Sam, um, from the work that we did over those first couple of years, um, we were given the collaboration award because we were doing things together um, well. Uh, education at um, Del Rande, which was an established event in the township. We hosted our first STEM fair and um, that really became a, a tradition and annual thing up until COVID hit last year. So we've had to morph quite a bit um, from a live setting to virtual for many things. We were able to plant 1800 native species in a rain garden and that was a collaboration that the Delran municipal team brought um, the Burlington County master gardeners in. Um, they brought Rutgers cooperative extension in and really helped us and our, our PTA members who are families living in Delran um, to help uh, 900 kids in the elementary school, some of them who had never had a chance to ever plant a plant before. And um, Deborah's group was planting a beautiful wildflower garden. So we were able to, through a lot of um, parent interaction through the rain garden we planted at the school to build more people interested in planting wildflowers in the community. So we were just hitting off of each other, paying off of each other completely. And at that time, the emerald ash borer was one of the insects that was um, a, a, a problem in the area. Now we have another one that's worse in Burlington County and Camden County, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the biodiversity audit that we completed with our middle school was one of those first integrations into curriculum and instruction using the next generation science standards, which they were at the time. So. Um, that is what got us that first award. So um, if you can go to the next slide, um, Sam, we, at the same time, we were beginning to really hunker down with the work that we were doing um, in sustainability. We also won um, an RFP to become one of four national um, uh, New Jersey STEM ecosystems. So if you Google the New Jersey STEM Pathways Network, you'll find out more about what these ecosystems are. We're not talking about um, biodiversity ecosystems. We're talking about partner ecosystems to provide cradle to career opp opportunities for students um, that really are aligned to the needs of a region. So working with teams like Deborah's working with businesses like Lockheed Martin, which is five minutes away from Del Rand, or Radwell International or Schneider Electric, who was doing a major solar install, Perkins Center for the Arts, which is a, an organization that services um, the art community uh, for people of all age, ages. They all, and our local college, which uh, a significant portion of our seniors go to, we were able to start really incorporating this work we were doing in sustainability to show them that we already were developing partnerships. We already were starting to get kids to, to think about how these types of opportunities could become career opportunities in the long run. By sparking that interest at a young age, we embolden our students to pursue career paths, potentially in these organizations, which benefit us in the school, and then benefit them in the community in the long run when they become taxpayers themselves who have to do things in a sustainable way. So um, that's just a little bit. We The picture that's shown there is um, what we call the STEM crawl. We went and visited all um, the rain gardens that we had done. We visited our solar installation. We went to Rowan College of Burlington County to see the work they were doing there and then Radwell International. And everybody got to start kind of making these partnerships um, at all surrounding around New Jersey STEM month, which is the month of March in the state of New Jersey. So check that out if you haven't heard about the New Jersey STEM Pathways Network and the work that we're doing 
Dalran is a big part of it. And uh, we've got an amazing digital fabrication lab space. We just installed a CNC router there. And our green teams use these spaces to be able to continue some of their projects um, in sustainability. So um, you can go on to the next slide now, um, Samantha. Deb, you want to talk about our community cleanups? Um, our community cleanups have been really successful. Um, as I guess most towns would know, they have their Clean Communities grants, and we use that grant funding to provide the pickers, the bags, um, the gloves for the kids to actually do a cleanup. And they do an amazing job. And uh, I'm like, uh, we also tried to bring in some education, talking about poison ivy, um, ticks, things like that, and really to point out that a lot of the trash that's on the ground is really, really small, and we need to focus on that small plastics. Um, we had a big event planned for last spring that had to be canceled, but all of our schools, even though they are were hybrid, managed to pull off a cleanup this year. And one of the uh, benefits of our collaboration is that um, we have access to the social media channels and we're able to put it out there to the people who don't have the kids in the schools. And we have a lot of people that do not have kids in Delran School District. And it's really nice to see, they see the community getting cleaner and um, it's kind of nice that we're able to highlight it. Next Absolutely. Time. So um, I talked just a little bit about um, our Delran STEM fair and, and the very first one that we did, it, it really came together in a big part because of people like Deborah on the municipal team. Um, we had the chicken ladies and um, they're ladies that are promoting um, backyard chicken, um, rearing and um, you know getting eggs and eating fresh and electric vehicles came so people were really able to talk to owners of um, current electric vehicles um, our local dealer came um, with a brand new volt and uh, people were able to like determine like what's the benefit cost benefit analysis of this for me and my family then our police and fire team, our leaf truck, which was state of the art at the time, um, they were able to get all of those contacts for us because, you know, schools generally will only get in touch with police when it's uh, an issue of hurt or harm for a student, not for something like this. And then thinking about the aspect of how did they use STEM in their everyday work life. And so that was what we tasked our um, people who were these demonstrators, talk about how STEM affects your career. And so um, the fireman, the leaf truck guy, I mean, he's got to be able to troubleshoot on the spot for this automated truck that uh, is able to work function with one individual instead of guys out there raking and, and you know, sucking and getting hurt a lot of times, um, they were really able to um, get excited about that for the township and realize the services that we've got in Delran are incredible. And then of course our green team students, they all had presentations and our fab lab at that time was just getting um, constructed so people could see what uh, a capital reserve funding was going towards. And then our incredible greenhouse um, with some demonstrations were going on as well. Literally the science wing with the greenhouse and this digital fabrication lab space, they are, their state of the art. And um, when you walk in it, you kind of feel like you're in a little college. We're really lucky. And if any of you have any interest in any of um, seeing these things in action, we're happy, especially now that our restrictions are going away with COVID restrictions being lifted. Um, we do do tours so people can kind of see what's happening and just give you guys other great ideas. So um, 
you know, there were prizes at the STEM fair. We've really changed things over time where we've created a passport for students to get them and their families to want to come. And we have translator for our Turkish and Portuguese speaking families because there's, we've had a 300% increase in um, Turkish and Brazilian families um, coming into the Dalran area. Um, so there are unique languages and we need, uh, we need translators to make these people feel like they have access and equity in a space like this where they may feel like it's, it's too much, it's too technical, they don't feel comfortable. But when we um, hire individuals like that and we turn um, materials into their native language, like the program, like the passport, it allows them to really feel comfortable and participate just like everybody else. So um, we're showcasing a lot when we do these events and uh, making sure people feel included. And I just wanna add that because the municipal team was involved, our recommendation was make this a public event. And Erica was like, oh, just like the greenhouse tour. I said, oh, aren't you gonna to tour the greenhouse? Oh, we hadn't thought about that. And, and it was like, oh, maybe they want to. And the students were growing plants and they were hauling them down the stairs to be able to bring them to the gym to, to sell them. And it's like, no, bring the, bring the people to the uh, greenhouse. And so we really tried to get more residents to see what was going on in their school. And realize how amazing it is. Right. It's exactly. very different than when many of them went to school there themselves, for sure. And a lot of them did go there. <laughs> they did a lot stay in Dalran, which is lovely. It makes a nice community. So Deborah's going to talk a little bit about another thing we do um, with another grant. If you go to the next slide, Sam. Oh, and Arbor Day. I mean, our first uh, Delray and Green team were pretty young. Um, and uh, we got our first um, community forestry plan and we wanted to celebrate Arbor Day. Uh, we didn't have any money and um, because of our connection with Erica and the schools and the STEM ecosystem, Snyder Electric donated trees so that we could plant them with the kids. And we went into each of the schools and we had big programs at each of the different schools and we did that. Um, we also hooked up our third grade teacher with the um, third grade tree program. And we helped them do their third grade tree program, which I guess happened before school. Um, so it was kind of interesting. And uh, this year, because we can't use municipal money to plant trees on school property, we planted trees on the municipal property. And because of the location of our school and municipal building, the kids were able to come across the street and join for Arbor Day and celebrate Arbor Day with us. So it was very nice. And um, that's what we're doing. Okay, if you go to the next slide, Sam, we're gonna talk just about the thing that's really, um, oh. we've been working on a lot this year, um, the spotted lantern fly. And um, not everybody may be affected by this in the same way. Um, in the Philadelphia area, people are going crazy about the cicadas coming out after 15 years or 17 years in hibernation. Um, but the spotted lanternfly is a major problem here in South Jersey. Um, we were blessed to have um, uh, the Burlington County Commissioner Linda Hines on with us last week to um, really talk through the issue and how we can continue to fight it. But what we did this year is um, in collaboration with our municipal team, be able to spread that message to the community through social media. Our youngsters in um, each of the buildings did um, public service announcements and had contests where the PTAs gave the kids like $25 gift card to Target or, um, you know, and, and they would, dependent upon the grade level, first place, second place, third place. And some of these are just beautifully done where the kids not just talk about the problem, but what you can do about the problem. And that's really where we want to inspire our students to feel like they can make a difference. So um, that Google Meet, allowing them to communicate with their county commissioner, gave them a different level of um, feeling like they can make a difference 
and they can talk to a, 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 a politician and um, feel confident asking a question and um, being brave and you know saying we're in this together. So it's really been very nice to have this come full circle throughout the year and it really be something that everybody in Delran is focused on, um, the schools and the community. So um, the next one is um, uh, just a little bit about the um, one of the projects that was funded through a grant in, um, uh, I think this was a PSC and G, Sustainable Jersey for Schools grant. And our, our uh, municipal team comes and celebrates each of these great accomplishments we make. We've got gardens, now we have a fish pond, we have an outdoor classroom space with um, gardens that the kids plant in and, and teachers can go out and have lunch outside and during COVID it's been essential and we're going to have an installation of a lot of different meteorological equipment out there it's all fenced in so it can be locked so that you know there's no damage to it in the evening um, but all the kids were busy doing this eagle scouts from the community came in and helped us um, to create this project so um, it's all these little things that are making the schools more and more beautiful over time, but it's because we know that our community is so supporting us through it. Um, Deborah, you're going to go on to the next slide and talk a little bit about the um, the non mandated recyclables that we work on as well. Yep. Um, so non mandated recycling is one of the actions that we really try to collaborate on. Um, our schools have been collecting shoes, costumes, toys. Um, and right now our favorite project is uh, Project Halloween. Uh, we installed collection bins at the school and the municipal building before Halloween. And uh, we took all the costumes and we created a little costume shop. Um, it was very well received and we installed bins after Halloween so that we could collect them be so that they would stay out of the tr waste stream. Um, we stored them until Halloween 2020, and we took it to a park to do it outside. It was very successful, and we're hoping that we'll be able to hold it this year in conjunction with the Fall Festival, which is right across the street from the municipal building, so we can have both going on at the same time, unless we take it into school. But um, <laughs> in the fall, we're talking about doing CD recycling, so we'll see where, how that works out. I can't wait to talk about that one, Deborah. I know. Um, and then the last program we're gonna tell you a little bit about, and, and deborah has been working with one of my high school sustainability project managers. I'll tell you about those in a moment, um, is this great community service project. Um, so we needed to complete our tree inventories. We were having a very difficult time getting it done. Um, so we decided to see if we could get students involved so we're gonna offer them a one day training on how to identify trees, how to measure them and evaluate their condition, take some pictures and we'll create Google maps that will have our inventory information. Um, the benefit of working with the kids, they can get community service hours for the work they do, which is really nice to be able to give them something in, and have them give something back to the community. So it's a it's a grade level requirement in Delran that right. all 11th graders have to complete 15 hours in order to graduate. Not all communities choose to do that, but Delran does. And and I think with COVID, the struggle has been a lot of the places that they might have otherwise worked, uh, they're not able to go in and do it now. So yeah, so these outdoor opportunities like spotted lantern fly. Um, and some of the things that the commissioner of Burlington County offered to the students, those are all um, great opportunities to be outside, socially distanced and doing something good for the community. So the last slide just is, um, you know, uh, the way that this works for us is that Delran has invested in um, two sustainability project managers per school. So there's four schools, a K through two, a three to five, a six to eight and a nine to 12 building. Each school has two sustainability project managers who act almost as club advisors, but this program is much bigger than a club. So there's a job description. I provide summer hours for them to work where they're paid. They are expected to complete annual reporting and goal setting. And then we meet with the municipal team as a district um, four times a year. So those quarterly meetings are, there's always an agenda. 
everybody's always reporting out. And then those really beautiful collaborations are able to continue to happen. This year, we did it all through Google Meet. So um, it wasn't terrible, but it's nicer when we can all be together because we actually like each other. Yep. Um, we'll go to Whistler's for a beer every once in a while or, it, um, you know, have, you know, just really good conversations. They're always inviting us to do stuff and we real, really feel supported by them. So that's a little bit about Delran. I hope we didn't take up too much time. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you touched upon what I think was important to really talk about the mechanism for that collaboration. So with you, it's it's a social thing as well as um, a, a community service thing. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, so next we're gonna go to Kristen from Rumson, who's gonna tell us a little bit about what's happening there. Hello, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna try to share my screen and do this correctly. Give me a second. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, my name is Kristen Hall. I am um, chair, actually chair of the Rumson Green Team and chair of the Rumson Environmental Commission. And I also sat on the school green team during the time that they were achieving um, bronze certification. So both the green team and the Environmental Commission believe that educating the younger generations is one of the most effective ways to make lasting changes in our community. Not only is it important to ensure children and teenagers learn how their behaviors affect their environment, but they can role model sustainable practices and help teach their families and friends. In order to affect a lasting and durable change, we worked with the school district and made a concerted effort to include environmental education in the curriculum and programming. Through collaboration and creativity, the district, which includes kindergarten through eighth grade, now has environmental education in various parts of the curriculum and programming. And we wanted to share some of our experiences with you. So of course, as an all volunteer group of people, we have neither the resources nor the expertise to do all of the things we really want to do. We are long on ideas and sort of come up short on time, staffing and money. So for us, collaboration has been the key. In fact, one of the first instruments of collaboration was Sustainable Jersey for Schools. We sent an email to the district right when Sustainable Jersey launched the program. Luckily, the school had heard of it as well and decided to participate. This really provided a blueprint for us for implementing sustainable practices in the school system and opened the door for some of our ideas. One of the first things we did was to create an environmental club. In 2017, we created a proposal. The goal was to channel some of the educational projects that the Rumson Environmental Commission was working on through the school district in order to reach a broader audience. So science teacher, Jen Crow, who is on the green team and the environmental commission, you know, was a bridge between those two things. And she was really instrumental. Although she ran the, um, the environmental club for the first few years. Although it was originally an idea brought by and run in collaboration with the Rumson EC, it is now run completely in the science department in the school. Um, and this picture is a picture of the kids hosting a table at our annual Rally for the R Two Rivers EcoFest, which, which is a collaboration with Clean Ocean Action um, and the Environmental Commission. They created educational recycling games and activities for the kids to play. Um, and the next one is Saturday, June 5th from nine to 12 in Victory Park in Rumson and you're all invited. So please come. Um, the great thing about this club is that the kids create and lead the projects themselves. This allows them to speak directly to the younger kids more effectively than us old people could do and gives them a chance to learn and lead. Not only do they uh, do projects outside of the classroom at various events in the community, but they uh, act as peers and they actually break, uh, break out into groups and make presentations to the younger classes on various environmental topics. Um, for example, they did a plastic bag recycling program within the school and they presented to all of the classes to try to um, get that information out there. They also did the same with a uh, uh, single use plastic reduction effort where they worked to get people to try to reduce that, um, their reliance on single use plastics like water bottles. They also um, help host environmentally themed movie nights for the younger children. And this started as a collaboration with the Rumson Education, uh, Rumson Environmental Commission and Clean Ocean Action off property, but now it's completely housed within the school and they just com completely do it themselves, which is great. Um, they, as I showed in the slide before, they create games for the annual green fair that focuses on ways to improve water quality and they host a table. 
They participate in the annual Clean Up Your Parks Day, which is the picture in the center there. Um, and they also run a table at the PTO Fall Fest, and that's where they get to um, put forth whatever their big initiative is for the year, which seems to, it changes each year. Um, another really successful project was Operation Oyster, and that was a collaboration with American Literal Society. Um, after visiting a street fair in Red Bank where ALS was tabling on their op uh, Operation Oyster program, we met with ALS to learn more about the educational program for marine science and how it could be tailored to our school curriculum. Because we were part of the school green team, we were able to facilitate an introduction and sat in on the first meeting with the superintendent of school, of the school and members of the science department. As it turned out, they did not just include it in the science classes at, as we had originally suggested. They decided to make it an annual full day multidisciplinary program. It teaches the history of aquaculture and oysters in New Jersey in the social studies class, food webs and other marine uh, biology topics in the science class, statistical analysis of what oysters can help in the math class, and of course, a letter writing advocacy campaign in the English class. And it all culminates with a trip to the riverbank. It's a really popular program. Um, the parents love it, the kids love it. So that's um, one of our great successes. Um, also in 2016, the town collaborated with the school district to implement an annual Arbor Day tree planting celebration. In that year, there were 20 trees planted, which included a legacy tree with a plaque for each class. The day consists of educational programming in the kindergarten and a presentation by a mentor class of older students. During the Arbor Day ceremony each year, the kindergarten is given a newly planted legacy tree on school grounds and a seedling to plant at their home. The superintendent of the school district, the mayor of the town, the Shade Tree Commission, the Environmental Commission, as well as the kindergarten mentor class and faculty all attend. Um, in 2020, the school underwent a large renovation, which meant that the legacy trees had to be moved. It was very fitting that the members of the original inaugural mentor class from 2016, who are now in high school, came back to help the tree to their new locations on campus. So that was good because it's free labor too. Um, in the same year, it became apparent that the now high school age kids who had participated in the environmental club still wanted to participate in local environmental projects. The green team and the environmental commission created the Rumson Junior Green Team. So this is an avenue for high school and college aged kids to remain involved and bring their unique perspective to environmental leadership and hopefully educate them on how to get things done on, on a municipal level. Although not housed within the school, it really grew out of the environmental club there. And I thought I would just tell you about it. The kids have been really successful. They passed a no idling resolution, created games and scavenger hunt for kids and created a vetted list of sustainable brands. And if you're interested in learning more about this uh, for your communities, you can visit uh, our website, which is, I'll put it in the chat for you. It's um, rumsonnj.gov. And then our site is backslash ENV. So in 2016, um, the school district worked with the student to apply for and receive a grant from the Rumson Education Foundation for an aquaponics lab and heating system for an old dilapidated greenhouse. The Rumson Environmental Commission lobbied for the grant as a way to create a foundation for further environmental education programming in the schools. Once renovated, the greenhouse was used regularly by the science department in the elementary and especially in the middle school. But it has expanded a lot in the last couple of years with just a little kindling and some visionary in visionaries in charge. The next thing you know, the foundation that has been set was fully integrated. Sorry, I'm getting a message. Um, was fully integrated uh, into the school curriculum to support about 12 sections of a new STEM agriculture program for the seventh and eighth grade. As noted in the slide, it is not just used for curriculum-based learning. The mushrooms and vegetables are harvested and used in the cafeteria as a farm to table effort. The school has just launched a fundraising campaign, in fact, to install an outdoor classroom between the greenhouse and an aquaponics lab and the new newly planted apple orchard. They are also collaborating with the borough on a second outdoor classroom that is planned adjacent to an existing pond on school property. On the municipal level, the borough worked with the superintendent of the school system and Monmouth University to create a vision for a field station on the shores of the Navasink River in Rumson 
and to establish an annual estuary day that teaches the science behind estuaries and why they are important. The field station will provide unique educational activities for the Rumpton School District and the surrounding school systems, direct access to natural ecosystems throughout the Navasink and Shrewsbury Rivers, and an array of classrooms and laboratories and meeting spaces, and a hub, it will actually be a hub for research for Monmouth University staff and partner organizations. So, you know, our roadmap to working with the schools um, has been really, really exciting for us. And, and we feel like it's been successful on many levels. And I just wanna leave you with kind of some of the things that worked for us. So establishing willing and supportive contacts within the school system was really key for us. Um, some examples of that are ideas of where to look for those supportive contacts would be, you know, the science department, the art department, um, school administrators, of course, leaders of the school clubs, like the Garden Club, the Spirit Club, the Environmental Club. Um, they're often looking for interesting things to do, content that they can bring to their students, um, especially if you get to know the kind of the needs of all the different clubs and what they're focused on, find ways to dovetail with them. Um, you know, to create and facilitate relationships that can provide or support environmental content so for us, you know, a lot of the local nonprofit environmental organizations, like as I mentioned, Clean Ocean Action and American Literal Society, but there are so many more. Um, the Beekeeper Society, Native Plant Society, Audubon Society. Um, we also worked closely with the town recycling coordinator and the DPW, guard, local garden clubs for uh, the Shade Tree Commission, the Environmental Commission, of course, um, and local universities. So those were kind of successful places for us to find collaboration. Um, also providing avenues and funding for environmental activities is really important. Um, kind of coming to people with a turnkey solution like we did with the American Literal Society was really helpful. Um, so creating the environmental club was key because then we had um, kind of a connection within the schools and a place to get the word out working with the PTO to create an environmental committee, which we haven't done, but in my last school district we did, that can be really effective because that's where a lot of grants and um, funding can come from. Um, if you work with the Education Foundation and other places, um, things can be really helpful. And of course, if they are fortunate enough to do Sustainable Jersey, um, you could help them by coming up with ideas for grants to apply for and maybe even doing a little bit of the work for them. So um, that's just our, uh, that was just our roadmap, um, but uh, it's been really great. And hopefully we have a lot more things coming down the pike. There were so many things I didn't even mention, but um, look forward to hearing from the next speaker. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, and I think you did, you, you wrapped up uh, with an important point that coming to the school with resources, with your hand extended, instead of saying, here's another thing I want the school to do, you're saying, hey, here's how I'm going to help bring PTA funding or foundation funding to support this. Here's some partners that can augment. And this is especially important because in September 2022, um, schools will be required to um, infuse uh, climate change education into student learning standards uh, statewide. So they're going to be looking for these place-based experiential um, opportunities uh, to, to create learning uh, for, for students. So these are some wonderful examples. Um, and so next I'm going to introduce Krista. Krista is from Egg Harbor Township and Egg Harbor School District. And um, they were the winner of the 2020 uh, Collaboration Award. And they've been especially great at bringing students into public uh, spaces, public lands, natural spaces in their community, and really creating some wonderful um, experiential learning opportunities and uh, helping the students feel ownership in their community. So I think you'll really enjoy what Krista has to say. Thanks, Krista. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to make sure you can see my screen. Am I presenting right now? You are. Okay, perfect. 
Okay, so I am Krista Delaney. Thank you so much, Heather, for that introduction. Um, I am a teacher at Egg Harbor Township High School. I teach AP Environmental Science and Advanced Biology. I'm a member of the district green team as well as the high school green team, and then also as well as the municipal green team for Egg Harbor Township. Um, I am alumni of Egg Harbor Township High School and my sons currently attend Egg Harbor Township Schools. The picture in the background of this slide is of the Great Egg Harbor Watershed. And I think it's important to keep in mind that Egg Harbor Township is a coastal community. And in the future, we're going to be um, hoping to focus on some aspects of our coastal communities within sustainable Jersey. So these are the accomplishments from the Egg Harbor Township Municipality, which was silver certified in 2018, and then the accomplishments from the school district. So the Egg Harbor Township High School, we were, um, besides being silver certified, we also won the Sustainability Champion Award. Alder Avenue Middle School also won the Sustainability Sustainable Champion Award. And the district has received $30,000 in grants from Sustainable Jersey from schools. We received the Sustainability Leadership Award. Krista, it's out. Krista, it sounds like your sound cut out a little bit. Receipt. In 2020, we received um, the Green Team Collaboration Award. We received the Green Team Collaboration Award because of the collaboration between our district as well as the municipality. Um, there are three teachers that serve on both the district green teams and the municipal green teams, and I'm one of them, and then John Jones and Jim House are the other two. Egg Harbor Township Schools and local Twenty acres. It's a sanctuary. It's provided uh, numerous school and community projects for um, community as well as our students to be able to to work in this nature reserve to help preserve it for future generations. So the first collaboration project there was erosion occurring at the nature reserve. Um, students in environmental classes from the high school went to the nature reserve and sloped and graded the hill and then planted wildflowers along the hill to slow down water as it moved down the hill. Students also removed netting that was at the nature reserve that was first put in place there to help hold the soil in place as the reserve was being built. Um, but small animals were getting trapped in it, so the students removed the netting. So the nature reserve is at a spot where it's actually an old mine site. It was a gravel mine, Bob's gravel pit. And um, it, it was no longer a mine site, and so it went through mine remediation. which brings me to collaboration story number two, which also is at the nature reserve. So students from the middle schools, um, they set up a smart trail project. The smart trails provide hikers at the nature reserve because there are a lot of trails at the nature reserve. It's a lot of fun to walk around. They provide hikers with access to arboretum points of in interest and wildlife habitat facts, using their cell phones to scan QR codes, locate on markers, and signage installed by the students. Once scanned, visitors are immediately connected to the township's historical past of the shipbuilding and fishing industry, depending on the Great Egg Harbor River and its native trees and wildlife for their food and livelihood. And so um, featured there is John Jones on the left-hand side and then Colin McLean also from our middle school, both teachers that are dedicated to the environment and to the students and the community. This is just another picture of that project with the QR codes 
and the students using their smart devices. Also at the nature reserve, we really did a lot of work at the nature reserve. We're so lucky to have it here in EHT. Um, our Eagle Academy students at our alternative high school worked really hard to develop structures at the nature reserve. They built a work shed, a solar powered well and composting toilet and a pavilion. And we were lucky to partner with the Geraldine Dodge Foundation, Holstina and Associates, Asperg and Sons Builders and World Water Volunteers to help with the solar powered well. And then the Geraldine Foundation, Palestina and Associates and Asperg Builders to construct a pavilion. So that's a background of how we have the students involved with the community to benefit the community at our nature reserve here in the township. And then the second, or I guess the fourth project, but for second space that I wanted to highlight is our community teaching gardens. So the community teaching gardens are located again in a cover township um, and they're located by our historical society. And we have members of the historical society also on the municipal green team. And um, this grant funded six acre community teaching garden is located at the Great Hay Carver Historical Society grounds and is created and tended by students. The teaching garden provides garden plots for adults who wanna grow their own food in a fun, supportive and cooperative learning environment. The garden provides the perfect setting for students to learn about the importance of organic growing methods to replace the use of chemicals with greener. Um, so for the schools, we're gonna to continue to be as a district green team. We will continue to work on projects that will help us to obtain points to either stay certified or to work towards becoming silver certified. We look forward to more collaboration in the next school year. As we all know with COVID, um, we were um, virtual then hybrid now in person with hybrid. And so looking forward to next year with more collaboration. Possible future project pending a grant will be a STEM bus. And we're really excited about that. For the township, we're in the process of submitting for this round of the certification cycle. We're still having bi-monthly meetings as a green team and are looking towards what actions we want to take in the future. We are actively seeking new passionate people to join the green team. So if anybody's out there from Egg Harbor Township and you want to join the green team, please contact um, Donna Berger at Town Hall, um, or you can contact me through the school district website, Krista Delaney. And then um, possible future projects are bike paths um, in addition to our bike path that we currently have. And what I think has really helped with Awesome. Thanks, Krista. And um, one thing I wanted to note about um, Egg Harbor is you guys kind of did the opposite thing. Um, a, a lot of, uh, you know, Sustainable Jersey Municipal Program was established prior to the schools program. That program is 10 plus years old. The schools program is only about five years old. And um, we just assumed that, you know, the towns would bring the schools along. But Egg Harbor is one of those examples where the school took the lead and did all these fabulous things and got the leadership awards, the champion awards. And then the town said, oh boy, I guess we better, uh, we better step up our game. Um, now, you mentioned that you were also on the town green team. Um, tell us a little bit more about that overlap. Do you all go to the town green team meetings? Do they come to your school meetings? Um, how do you keep that communication going? 
So um, yes, we do the three teachers that are on the township green team. Also, we do attend the township green team meetings. And I think that's been really helpful. And also, like you said, we've gone through the sustainable Jersey for schools process. So we're familiar with, um, with the actions and how to complete actions. And so I think that's what we really brought that knowledge to our municipality. And then once the municipality saw how the system was laid out, how you, how you completed actions and how there was grant money available and how to apply for a grant and how you can use it in certain ways within the township. I think that's what really helped motivate all of us. And, and I think we're gonna continue to see just more collaboration in the future. But yes, we were certified first as a school district and then, then as a municipality. Yeah, um, and you know, with over a thousand schools and 60% of the school districts uh, participating in Sustainable Jersey for Schools and over 80% of the towns, it's very likely that you have a buddy, I call him the sustain buddy, um, out there <laughs> um, in, in the world to collaborate with, you know, because we have 566-ish municipalities and there's a lot of small communities out there that just don't have enough volunteers. And so, Doing a tag team, whether it's tag teaming with your school or utilizing the hubs program. I know that Del Ran has been really excellent at um, uh, participating in the tri-county hub they have with three counties, Burlington, Gloucester, and Camden all coming together and doing projects together. We really encourage you to uh, follow the mantra of many hands make light work and um, to look for your collaborative friends uh, at the county level, at the school level, teaming up with other municipalities um, to do projects together so that you can achieve points and make a difference um, and not burn yourselves out. So <laughs> um, at this point, I think we're gonna take some questions uh, from your peers. Yeah, and while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I just have a few uh, things to wrap up uh, with our presentation today. Uh, so let me just share my screen. So of course, you know, we want to thank all of our Sustainability Summit sponsors for supporting not only this conference, but also the Sustainable Jersey and the Sustainable Jersey for Schools programs. Um, there are still more Sustainability Summit events taking place this week. Um, a few that you might be particularly interested in. Uh, tomorrow night, we have a sustainable movie night. Um, it'll be a discussion of Kiss the Ground. Uh, that's at 7 p.m. And um, if you do want to attend that, it does require screening the film prior to the discussion. Um, and then on Friday, there will be a session on the new Sustainable Jersey for Schools Digital Schools program at 10 a.m. And then, as I mentioned, we will be posting all of the recordings and the presentations on our website, um, and you'll be able to find that under Resources, Presentations, and Sustainability Summit. Um, so yes, as Heather said, if there are any questions, we are happy to take them now. Um, I know there was one in the Q&A earlier that Kristen um, replied to, just giving some more information about their upcoming event. Um, so everyone should be able to see that in the chat. Well, if there aren't any further questions, we'll let you uh, head out for the evening, enjoy this beautiful night. Um, and uh, thank you so much for attending and learning from each other. We look forward to many more wonderful um, examples of collaborations uh, on your certification applications. Up oh, here's one or one question. Um, any tips on getting teachers to join your green team? We have none. Um, I will say that Teachers are very pressed for time. Uh, they're hardest working people, very passionate. Um, you may find a passionate parent um, that may have a school connection. Um, that's, that's one suggestion that I have. Um, Kristen, you wanna take that? Um, yeah, and I actually had a question for one of the other presenters as well. But um, so, yeah, I, I feel like if 
you, and you hit upon this earlier, Samantha, but if you come to the teachers and the administration and uh, people in the school with kind of solutions and ideas how to help them, you know, with content, maybe it's with a presenter, maybe it's with a program, um, then that's that's a really great way to kind of start the dialogue. And um, having them join your green team, you know, it all really depends on what your green team requires. For us, it's a very fluid kind of um, open thing. We have a lot of workshops that are kind of uh, uh, just, you know, whoever's working on this project or that project, they tend to work in silos. So it's not a huge time commitment for the for our green team. Um, so that's kind of what I would suggest is come to them with something that they might and um, enjoy doing within the schools. And then I had a question about the tree ID program um, that looked super interesting to me. And I was just wondering um, how did you, who did you work with to get that done? Did you work with the, the forestry service or where did you guys find that? That was um, Erica and Deborah, um, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I can do that. Um, so we have our community forestry plan that's approved by the state. And one of the things that we uh, put in our plan to get done was to do inventories of the trees in our parks and playgrounds, identify hazard trees. Um, and the problem that we've been having is we're almost done and then we get a big storm and then we lose trees and it's almost like you gotta go back over. So uh, we thought this is a really good way if we get it, blitz it and get it done in like a couple of days, we'd be really well set. Um, and one of the challenges, I'm gonna say one of the challenges is that Google Maps does not work on an iPhone very well. Mm -hmm. You can record it all on Android. So it's like, okay, so we gotta find kids that have Android phones or work mm -hmm. with to work them that way. So that's kind of how we were doing it because there's just, I was doing it manually and moving dots around. And it's like, I can't do this. It's just not working. So um, yeah, and Google Maps actually allows you to capture all the data that you would want to capture when you're in the field and just put it right in on your on a, an Android phone. Um, <laughs> yeah, or you know, a tablet, whatever, but you know, it doesn't work with Apple. Snarky Apple people. But, yeah, that's too bad. Okay, thank you. I D program with a with a one of the local community foresters. Uh, on Monday, so he, he's going to go and it, tell them what to look for, how to how to do it, and because we're asking them to take photos and tag it to the tree, we'll be able to go back and look at it and say, oh, that was close, but we can change it. So right. I uh, love that idea. Yeah, I I think it's going to work if we get kids. Uh, Deborah, uh, you, your example reminded me of how useful students are with completing the community asset mapping action, which right. is in, in both programs. And it doesn't necessarily have to look like a map. It could be a list or a Word document that you end up producing. But I've seen some wonderful examples of students completing the maps as assignments, you know, getting various grades for adding things to the community maps and using the school as a conduit to get answers from the community about the assets. And the students are really great about, you know, creating those visuals um, that you can use. Points. Yeah, yeah. In both programs, you can take your work and upload it to your application and you both get points. So um, great use of students. I would just say it's kind of dated now because Google does all that for you. So, you know, the stuff is already there on the map. Sometimes, yes, yeah. Although I do, um, I love to see when communities add people, you know, people as resources to your community asset map. Uh, and that's something Google can't, can't tell you. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I think that about wraps it up. Again, I cannot thank um, you all enough, um, our, our, our folks from Egg Harbor, Rumson and Delran for being so generous with your time and your talents and preparing these wonderful 
uh, brag books for us to be inspired and, and um, you know, encourage us to reach out to our partners uh, and our sustainer buddies. So everybody have a great night. Um, I, I look forward to seeing you in some other sessions on the Sustainability Summit. And I really look forward to seeing your applications this year and your wonderful stories of collaboration. Have a great night, everybody. Yes, thank you so much.